good morning one and all up to now we have seen about uh, the low frequency analysis of all configurations of the bjt sunsets and in the last videos we have seen about uh, high frequency equivalent circuit of the bjt sunsets in this class we are going to discuss about high frequency response of transistor circuits like the common emitter and common source amplifier configurations and common base and common gate amplifier configurations and etc in the concept of high frequency response of transistor circuit first of all we are going to see about the common emitter and common source amplifier configuration in order to understand this common emitter and common source amplifier configuration we are going to take one common emitter amplifier okay this is a common emitter amplifier circuit in this the emitter is common for both input and output terminals and the circuit was driven by the two voltage sources one is uh, v plus for the collector and v minus for the emitter and the ac signal source is vi and rs is the source resistance and here the cc1 is the coupling capacitor and ce is the emitter bypass capacitor r1 and r2 are forming voltage divider bias and rc is the collector resistance and re is the emitter resistance and ce is the emitter bypass capacitor along with this we have one load resistor rl and the cl which is a load capacitance okay in order to understand high frequency analysis of this circuit we are going to assume the coupling capacitor and emitter bypass capacitor are short circuited and cl is a open circuited one okay so here the cc1 capacitor will be short circuit for high frequencies because the reactance of the cc1 and ce are very very low for high frequencies and we are also assuming the cl which is a load capacitor that is a open circuit in order to simplify our analysis and the high frequency equivalent circuit can be given like this okay so here if you see this is the transistor equivalent circuit so which is containing r pi c pi c mu gm v pi and small r not okay up to now this is the high frequency equivalent circuit of the transistor alone and along with this we have the va source and rs at the input side and we have assumed the cc1 is short circuited and the parallel combination of r1 and r2 can be given with a single resistance rb here if you see the two dc sources has been grounded as we are doing the ac analysis therefore the resistances at the output side rc and rl both are in a parallel combination because both are starting from the collector circuits and ending at ground okay so here rc and rl as i mentioned as a parallel resistances and also we have assumed the cl is open circuited so which was neglected from the output side circuit and here we have assumed the ce is short circuited one therefore the re can be neglected therefore this is the high frequency equivalent circuit of the common emitter configuration now we are going to simplify this small signal high frequency equivalent circuit we can replace the cmu capacitor so which is the feedback capacitor with a equivalent miller capacitance cm okay this miller capacitance and the miller effect we have seen in the last videos and the miller capacitance cm can be given as cmu into 1 plus gm rl dash okay so here the rl dash is nothing but the parallel combination of r not rc and rl as we have the three resistances which are in parallel combination at the output side therefore the three resistances can be replaced with the single resistance rl dash okay here rl dash is the parallel combination of small r not rc and rl resistances okay therefore the voltage gain will be equal to 1 plus gm into rl dash that is getting multiplied with the cmu in order to get the miller capacitance cm okay so the upper 3 db corner frequency or upper 3 db frequency can be given as fh is equal to 1 by 2 pi tau p okay so the upper 3 db frequency which is given as fh frequency in the frequency response curve that will be equal to 1 by 2 pi tau p tau p can be given as r equivalent into c equivalent okay so here the c equivalent is nothing but the parallel combination of c pi and cm therefore which is equal to c pi plus cm and r equivalent is a parallel combination of this rb r pi and rs okay when we are calculating the upper 3 db corner frequency 
we are going to short circuit the VI. Therefore, the source resistance RS is also in parallel with this parallel combination of RB and R pi. Okay. Therefore, R equivalent will be equal to R pi in parallel with RB in parallel with RS. That is R equivalent. And the C equivalent is a parallel combination of C5 plus Cm. Therefore, the time constant related to the Fx can be given as tau p that is equal to R equivalent into C equivalent. Okay. Then we can represent the Fx is equal to 1 by 2 pi. So, R equivalent into C equivalent which is R pi parallel R p parallel R s into C pi plus C m. Now, we are going to calculate the mid band voltage gain for this common emitter configuration okay while calculating the mid band voltage gain we are going to assume the c pi capacitance and cm capacitance which are in parallel with the input side of our circuit those are open circuited like that we are assuming therefore the circuit will becomes like this here the input voltage is nothing but a v pi that is across the parallel combination of rb and r pi resistances okay now we can calculate the voltage gain by calculating the output voltage and input voltage and the ratio of output voltage to input voltage is nothing but the voltage gain. Therefore, we can calculate output voltage V0 will be equal to actually the output voltage is a voltage across the RL dash resistance. Okay. The current flowing in RL dash is IL load current. Okay. Therefore, we can write V0 is equal to IL into RL dash. But IL is nothing but minus GM V pi because of direction of GM V pi and IL are opposite. Therefore, V0 will be equal to minus GM V pi RL dash. And now, from the input side circuit, the V pi value, the V pi is a voltage across a parallel combination of RB resistance and R pi resistance, which was replaced with the single resistance. Okay, so in this circuit, the V pi value will be equal to applied voltage VI into the across the resistance RB parallel R pi divided by the total resistance in the in the loop RB parallel R pi plus R s. Okay. So, that is the V pi value. From this one, we can calculate the V i like V i is equal to RB parallel R pi plus R s divided by RB parallel R pi into V pi. Okay. So, just rearranged that above equation. Therefore, we can calculate the mid band voltage gain the magnitude of the mid band voltage gain magnitude of AVM which will be equal to V0 divided by VI at medium frequency which is equal to this GM RL dash into RB parallel R pi divided by RB parallel R pi plus RS. Okay? This is the mid band voltage gain of the common emitter configuration. So, that from high frequency equivalent circuit of our common emitter configuration we have calculated the cutoff frequency or corner frequency as well as the mid band voltage gain. Next, we are going to see the common base and common gate amplifier analysis at high frequencies. This is the circuit for the common base amplifier circuit. Okay, in this circuit, the base was given to the ground terminal through the CB capacitance, and the emitter will be the input terminal, collector will be the output terminal. Therefore, the common base circuit is shown in the figure. The circuit configuration is same as that of the common emitter configuration except that the bypass capacitor is added to the base and the input is capacitively coupled to the emitter terminal. Okay? So, here the input signal VI has been given to the emitter terminal through the CC coupling capacitor and here RS is the source resistance and RE is the emitter resistance and R1 and R2 are forming voltage divided by us, okay, that will provide the biasing for our circuit and RC is a collector resistance and RL and CL are load resistor and load capacitances, okay. Here CB is the base bypass capacitor. As we are going to do analysis at high frequencies, the bypass capacitor and the coupling capacitors are replaced with the short circuit. Okay, the coupling capacitor CC was replaced with the short circuit and the bypass capacitor CB is also short circuited and the two DC sources that are present in the circuit are going to be grounded like this. And also we are neglecting the resistances R1 and R2 from the circuit because the R1 and R2 
has been started from the ground terminal because if you see the CB is short circuited therefore the voltage at this potential is zero and also this R1 is ending at the ground and R2 is also ending at the ground okay therefore resistances R1 and R2 are connected between the ground to ground therefore there is no effect of R1 and R2 and also in this circuit for our simplification I am going to take the internal output resistance of the transistor which is small r naught is assumed to be infinite which means that it will be open circuited and also we will assume the load capacitor CL as a open circuit therefore the high frequency equivalent circuit will be like this after assuming the output resistance small r naught is infinite we can see the transistor equivalent circuit which is containing r pi input resistance and c pi is the input capacitance which is a forward bias or diffusion capacitance and c mu which is the reverse bias or diffusion capacitance and gm v pi which is the dependent output of current source okay up to here this is the equivalent circuit for the transistor alone and the base terminal has been grounded so here emitter was given with re rs and v pi and at the output side from the collector circuit to the ground we have rl and cl okay rl and cl which was shown here and there is a resistance rc which was connected between the collector terminal to the ground terminal okay which is also mentioned here so this is the high frequency equivalent circuit of the common based configuration and the capacitance cmu which led to the multiplication effect is no longer been in the input and the output terminals okay here the cmu is the feedback capacitor which will give to the miller effect and the miller capacitance okay so the miller effect is a multiplication effect okay due to the cmu capacitance but here the multiplication effect can be neglected because the cmu is connected to the signal ground okay if you see one of the cmu terminal has been given to the ground like this okay therefore there is no multiplication effect of cmu in this circuit therefore we can say one side of the cmu is given to the signal ground when we apply the kcl at the emitter terminal okay if you apply the kcl at this emitter terminal there are the incoming currents in gm v pi ie current and the current through the c pi capacitance and the current through the r pi resistance okay so which can be written like ie emitter current plus gm v pi current okay and also the current through c pi which is a v pi divided by 1 by s c pi and also the current through r pi resistance v pi divided by r pi which will be equal to 0 now we know that uh, the value of v e and v pi are equal but opposite inside because the v pi voltage is getting generated through the v e voltage only therefore v pi is nothing but minus of v e okay because of the directions therefore we can replace v pi as minus v e here in these three places we can replace v pi as minus v e therefore if you take the minus v e as common i e plus minus v e into here gm we have and this 1 by 1 by sci will go to the numerator which is equal to s into c pi and this 1 by r pi will be equal to 0 therefore we can take this minus v e to the right hand side therefore i e will be equal to v e into gm plus sci plus 1 by r pi okay that is the question and also if you take the ratio of the emitter current to the emitter voltage i e divided by v e which is equal to 1 by r pi plus gm plus sc pi okay so here ie is the input current and ve is the input voltage okay so ie is the input current and ve is the input voltage the ratio of input voltage to the input current is nothing but the reciprocal of the input impedance so which is nothing but 1 by zi the reverse of the input impedance that is equal to 1 plus gm r pi divided by r pi plus s into c pi so we know that the gm r pi is nothing but the beta therefore we can replace it as beta 1 plus beta divided by r pi plus s into c pi okay this is a 1 by zi the reverse of the input impedance now we can get the input impedance zi is equal to r pi divided by 1 plus beta plus 1 by s c pi 
that is the input impedance therefore the equivalent input portion of the circuit can be shown in this figure in this one we have replaced the input side circuit with zi where zi is nothing but the parallel combination of r pi divided by 1 plus beta and in parallel with the c pi capacitance okay that is the equivalent circuit at the input side similarly the output equivalent circuit can be given like this okay so at the output side we have the two capacitances c mu and cl and rc and rl the two resistances okay and in this output side equivalent circuit we are going to assume the cl is open circuited okay so here one side of the c mu is given to the signal ground which means that which will eliminate the miller effect or feedback effect therefore the fh may be larger than the ce configuration therefore the higher corner frequency fh will be larger than the ce configuration okay when you go for the cb configuration the bandwidth will be increases because there is no miller effect therefore the input side portion of the circuit the upper 3 db frequency which was given as fh pi okay this is the corner frequency or upper corner frequency due to the c pi capacitance that's why it was mentioned as fh pi which is equal to 1 by 2 pi tau ph where the time constant tau ph will be equal to at the input side if you see the parallel combination of r pi divided by 1 plus beta and re and rs okay these are all the three resistances available therefore the r pi divided by 1 plus beta in parallel with re in, in parallel with rs that will get multiplied with the input capacitance c pi that is the input side time constant of the circuit which is the tau ph okay by using this time constant therefore the upper corner frequency is due to the c pi capacitance which is f h pi equal to 1 by 2 pi tau ph in this output side circuit we are assuming the cl is open circuited okay therefore the upper corner frequency fh will be affected by c mu also because the c mu is in a parallel combination at the output side therefore that will affect the upper corner frequency therefore the capacitance c mu will also produce the upper 3 db frequency therefore the upper 3 db frequency due to the c mu capacitance can be given as f h mu which is equal to 1 by 2 pi tau p mu where that time constant tau p mu will be equal to the resistance into the capacitance value at the output side the resistances are rc is in parallel with rl okay which was mentioned here and the capacitance is c mu okay therefore that time constant tau p mu is equal to rc parallel rl into c mu if the c mu capacitance is very much less than the c pi capacitance then the f h pi the higher 3 db frequency due to the c pi capacitance okay is dominates the higher frequency response however the factor r pi divided by 1 plus beta in a time constant of tau p pi is small therefore the two time constants may be in the same order of the magnitude therefore the frequency response curves for the c pi lo and c pi c mu combination was given here from this frequency response curves we can understand that when we have only c pi capacitance okay therefore the higher corner frequency fh due to pi will be larger value okay which means that the bandwidth will be more and if we have only cl capacitance at the output side therefore the bandwidth will drastically reduces okay this is the bandwidth due to the cl capacitance fh l we can represent it as fh l which is due to the only cl capacitance and based on the cl capacitance value so we can increase the bandwidth and also if we have the combination of c pi capacitance and c mu capacitance then this will be our frequency response curve So which has the upper cut off frequency like this okay this is due to the c pi and c mu both are acting at the same time from this graph we can understand that if the value of c pi is high then we can get the more bandwidth okay and this is about the common base and common gate amplifier circuit analysis at high frequencies in the next class we are going to discuss about the cascode circuit at high frequencies